Hey, Today All Day. Welcome to Today Talks on this last day of August. We have a great show for you. Carson Daly brings us Pop Start. Simone Biles opens up in a candid conversation with her mom, Nellie. One of our favorite people around here. Simone Biles, the Olympic champ, recently sat down for an interview with probably her favorite journalist. Sorry, it's not you this time, Hoda. Buffer. Asking the questions this time around was Simone's mom, Nellie Biles. The two shared a candid conversation about mental health in the Tokyo Games. Simone opening up on what it felt like to take a step back on the world stage. And here's a little bit of what she had to say. Not a lot of people can relate to winning and to being an elite athlete and to doing the things and breaking the barriers that we're doing. But a lot of people can relate to like mental health and like normal people stuff because we're not seen as normal people walking around. But then once I kind of took a step back, I obviously was expecting to feel like a lot of backlash and embarrassment, Mm -hmm. but it's the complete opposite. And that's the first time I felt like human like besides simone biles i was simone and people kind of respected that how do you, oh, you were there what's your take on I that mean, conversation well, with mom? what a beautifully intimate conversation yeah. i was just thinking how tough it must be for nelly to listen to her daughter talk about the pain she endured she loves her little girl so much and to hear her be so open and honest about it but i was texting nelly during the olympics and she just kept saying, like, pray for Simone, sending heart. So to watch her, them sitting together and be able to see that. Do you think her mom has a, a, a good idea of how many millions of people she is going to help <laughs> by by being so brave to talk about her mental health status? You know what? I don't know that that's probably dawned on her. I think they see her as this incredible athlete. She's yeah. probably going to influence a lot more people through this. You're right. It's a great conversation. Yeah. Dwayne Johnson, the pro wrestler and movie star, Maybe used to playing a hero on the big screen, but The Rock recently drew some attention online thanks to one TikTok comparing his good looks to that of a real-life hero. Take a look at this. I really don't think y'all are ready for this because this is insane. Look at him. You cannot tell me that is not Mr. Dwayne. Dwayne The Rock, John, that, it's him. That's Dwayne The Rock. You, you're not convincing me otherwise. Is it? That's actually Lieutenant Eric Fields of Morgan County, Alabama on the left. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, seeing his lookalike hey. gone viral. Oh. Now, The Rock responded to this on Twitter writing, wow, guy on the left is way cooler. <laughs> Stay oh. safe, brother, and thank you for your that service. That's a doppelganger. Man, it's crazy. Yeah. Yes. Not surprisingly, Lieutenant Fields says he hears this comparison of looking like The Rock all the no time kidding. and for good reason well he's also wow. ripped too yeah, yeah. Like, a great it. compliment you could use that for your to your bent for evil <laughs> yeah. getting in all the great restaurants in alabama oh my goodness. Sign autographs. <laughs> he has used a little bit welcome back today on the third hour we are cooking with cal dylan dreyer makes her family's famous meatballs with a few special guests check it out it is time now for another edition of Cooking with Cal. And my little chef and I are making a cherished family recipe straight from Sicily with help from another special guest. It's a special edition of Cooking with Cal. What are we making today? Uh, 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 meatballs. Meatballs. And so we have enlisted the help of my mother-in-law, your Nana, right? And where did this recipe come from? Well, this was Brian's great-grandmother's uh, recipe. She brought it over from Sicily with her. So Brian's great-nana means this is your great-great-nana's recipe. So we've got ground veal, ground pork. beef, and ground pork. The secret, I think, is the eggs, right? That's right, that's at the, at the end. After everything's done, then you put the beaten eggs on top of it and it keeps it all together. So. Where do we start? What do we do? Okay, so we're gonna season the meat because it's very blah without it. So lots of lots of salt, lots of pepper. Do you wanna do salt or pepper? Lots of pepper. Do huh? salt? Okay. I'm gonna make this some salt. <laughs> and you're gonna do garlic powder and uh, onion powder. Okay. That seems like a lot. So now we put breadcrumbs in a bowl and, and then just add milk. milk. Yep. Calvin, I have something special for you. <gasps> Goggles. Maybe you won't cry this time. Put your hand on the top. Ready for parsley? Breadcrumbs that have been soaked in the milk. 
forget the cheese. All right, sprinkle that in. Oh, my hands were clean. We gotta do this again? No. All right, I guess I'll do it. Okay, so now eggs. Eggs, we beat uh, the eggs in a bowl. We use a lot of eggs because that's what gives it the fluffiness and the, okay. Um, it like keeps it together. Okay. meatballs in and bake them in the oven at 375. I'm not doing all this by myself. This isn't cooking with mommy. This, this is cooking, cooking with me. Cal. Mm -hmm. from our happy I know. plates. <laughs> We've just been snacking and watching. Oh it's God. good if you make the whole big batch. It sounds like a big recipe, but then you freeze them, you serve them to the whole family. They're so good. They're so easy I'm to so eat. I'm so glad you like them. Thanks, this is guys. A win. Welcome back. Today on Hoda and Jenna, they're reminiscing about their first apartment. That's a good one. And struggling with what it takes to get kids organized. Next. So we thought it'd be kind of fun to think about the very first time we moved yes. out of our parents' house, maybe at, I don't know, after college or whatever, yeah. and got an apartment. You know, when you had to pay your rent, you had to pay your electricity and the cable and when all that so stuff. When it's so fun, the first the apartment. The very first. Where was your first apartment? Mine wasn't great. Mine was in a small town in Mississippi, and I remember it because it was literally a, it was a, it was a studio, but it was a room, and it had a Murphy bed, the kind that you yes. pull down, so that's how, you, you know how yes. messy, it had the bed <laughs> in the middle of the house, and the kitchen was this little, it was a burner, and a thing, and whatever, and there was a closet, and that was it. Did you so keep when, it clean? No, no. But I couldn't even, like... It was impossible. When someone came, I would take the Murphy bed and just shove <laughs> all the stuff in. But I remember how just little it was, and how you realize it doesn't matter, you know, the, the space. Size. Yeah, or the space at all. And it was just one of those, I couldn't keep it clean, but I remember it really well, but I remember feeling like a grown-up. Yeah. It's like, I'm paying my, my rent, yes. and I'm paying my bills, and I'm doing mm -hmm. all that, because, you know... I, I was what living was in Washington, D.C. Yeah. I lived with five people in yeah. a four-bedroom house, so friends of ours <laughs> shared. I stayed in the basement, yeah. which I loved. It was like it, the basement, which I think people would normally, you know, have right. a family room yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. But I slept there, and I could just walk straight out to my car. And I got the basement because I was a teacher, so I left the earliest of anybody to go to work. I left at the crack of dawn. But I, I, I had the fondest feelings for it, too. Yeah. It's like, I loved that time, yeah. you know? I mean, it wasn't glamorous, but it was also you so loved fun it. to be with all those friends and yes, be working. And, yes, I mean, anyway. But. I just had a, a flashback of one of the scare, one of the worst moments in a home that I had. I was renting an apartment in, a, in, in Illinois, and I was sitting in the apartment. And you know when you, I was, I had just gotten out of the shower and the pizza had come and, from the pizza guy. So anyway, I had a towel on. I just took the pizza, brought it in. And I was just sitting on the couch. You know when you're just like, I'm not. Full on. Wait, 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 wait. Just didn't care. And it was a home that was owned by somebody. I was renting oh, no. it. And I heard. And I was like, oh, no one's coming in. And I, I will never forget it. All of a sudden, I heard a key in the door because it was her house. I was renting it. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know when you're in your, at your worst self? Naked eating pizza, sitting on the couch alone like a big old 
loser, which I was. No. Yes. And I still and what, remember. And the woman, did you the just door. cover I was like, like, oh, my God, no. I go, I'm busy. Like, I didn't know what to say. I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> I was like. And she came in, and I just went running, like, in the back. Yeah. It, but I remember it because, you know, you live alone, and you yes. think that you're, anyway. You think you're safe. That has nothing Eating to do pizza. with this program. Do you still eat pizza naked on the couch? No, no. no that's, <laughs> you grew out of that, too. I grew out of that. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, let's move on to <laughs> vacation home debate. This is a very... 2020. No, this is better. This is okay. Let's go. Should we no. talk about kids and organization? Yeah, because you're good at decluttering. Whenever you come into my office space, you always declutter it. Well, you went on a really good tear for a little I bit did. I know. about cleaning, cleaning yeah. and feeling organized. Yeah. We're going to get you back there. Okay. But what about your kids? Like, what about the, their rooms? What yeah. about their? I I try to make everything into a game. Okay. So and I did do? this with my students. Oh. It's so funny. We would put on music and we would all like help out. And I think. The thing that I noticed with Hal, because yeah. he's the youngest, yeah. is when I'm like, clean up your trucks, if it's, if I don't help, it's overwhelming. He doesn't do it, right. You know what I mean? Like, if you just look at your closet and you know you have to do it, it's so much more Tell fun. Tell me what, what's the game. So what do you so do? So I'll put on yeah, a song, song and say, yeah. okay, let's clean up all of our toys by the time this the is over. The song's over, okay. And everybody kind of helps out, you know? Oh, that's and a good one. it's fun. And I think if you start like that... Then by the time they're like independent, they sort of know what to do. Well, you're—I mean, you're good about being organized with mm -hmm. stuff. I wonder if your kids watch you because I think that's why my kids are messy. Well, I, my mom, yeah. my mom is crazy clean. She is. So yeah. you, so you got that. And, and I sort of hated it when I was little, yeah. but I was trying to think the other day because um, my kids actually—I dropped them off with their grandparents. Yeah. And so I don't, except for how. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, I was like, should I go up and just like clean out all their drawers? Like yeah. that sounded what? fun to me. Right. But it then did. I. Yeah, but then I was like, no, no. I bet you, are their rooms pretty clean? Your the, girls? Uh, outwardly, yeah. but there's stuff okay. stuck inside. Okay, right. well, the Washington Post recently featured an article on ways to keep them organized. Here are the tips. Help them visualize clean before and after photos. Or a good way to do that. <laughs> I'm going to so do take that a for picture you. You know what? I'm going to take a Polaroid of your office when it looks good oh, yeah. and just put it up on your mirror. Maybe that, that might be motivating. Okay. okay. And also they say create easy-to-do lists with pictures of items cleaned up and organized, like clothes in the laundry basket, toys on the shelf, books stacked up. Okay, or have a super specific places where everything goes with labels. That's lab they love labels. I know, but I'm not a good labeler. That's one thing I'm not great at. Okay. But maybe next year, right? All right. Okay. You know what? September is just around the corner. So you may be looking to spruce up your home for fall. Jasmine Roth, she knows what she's doing. She's the host of Help! I wrecked my house on HGTV, <laughs> where she turns failed homes, rent right. reno projects into beautiful, Please functional designs. Jasmine, hi. How are you? Hi. Oh, you know. hang on. oh, there you are. Okay, so talk us through. We want to know the hot trends. We want to be on trend yes, this September. Yes, we need help. Okay, that's fair. I don't know how I became the trendy <laughs> one because I feel like I'm not really that trendy, but um, there are a few that I am seeing and can't be ignored. So, um, you know, I always hear like, oh, you know, brown is the new black or green is the, here's the one, green is the new gray. Green, White, is, green the is the new gray. gray. What are you talking about? So green so is the neutral? So instead of like your typical neutral, uh, muted green tones are replacing gray as the new go-to color. So like um, green is calm. It's reminiscent of the outdoors. And it's a neutral that's found in nature. So green is this new color that psycho like from a psychology standpoint, it's very calming. Mm. I like that green kitchen. So yeah, this is actually from Help I Wrecked My House. This is a new sneak peek of a kitchen that we did this season it's that's really just beautiful. about to air. It's beautiful. That Good job. Beautiful. Okay, let's talk really quickly about the mural trend. Yes. Okay, so murals are a way that you can really just add a lot of color and movement to a room. And it doesn't have to be expensive. You can use paint. So this is called color blocking. Mm -hmm. And you can just paint big shapes on a wall. Um, it makes a huge difference. It's easy to change. I mean, trends change, right? We're talking about trends for a reason mm -hmm. because they're yeah. trends. Um, and then there's other things you can do. I did a nursery where I used a Sharpie marker on the wall and I didn't have money for a wallpaper, but it made a huge impact. And, you know, some of these, these are great examples of how to, this is a really big wall, actually. Yeah. You can see it went all the way two stories high. Yeah. You can really change the look of a space. 
um, without a lot of money. But yeah, oh, this is the Sharpie wall. Wow, you see those? I cannot that believe is not you wallpaper. did that. That's, you're unbelievable. Well, that's because you're you. Yeah, you're talented. Wow. Could, if I took a Sharpie to the wow. wall, it would look like Poppy took a Sharpie <laughs> exactly. to the wall. No, uh, well, it really wasn't that hard. <laughs> well, we want to say thank you. Uh, we'll put our last trend online, but we want to say thank you, Jasmine. The new season of Help! I Wrecked My House premieres Monday on HGTV, and it was fun to get that little Yeah, thank you, Jasmine. Welcome back to our special hour dedicated to Home Sweet Home. Hoda will be back a little later in the show. And one way to create an inviting living space is by clearing out all that clutter. So right now, we're going to help you tackle what might be the messiest space in your home, the garage. Maybe your garage looks like this, or maybe this, or this. Not to worry. No job is too tough for the neat or method organization expert, Ashley Jones Hatcher, who dropped by when Chanel was here with some awesome ideas. Take a look. The garage can feel so overwhelming when you step into it and try to figure out how to organize it, but it's so easy. So one of the things that we love doing at Neat Method is creating zones. Over here, you're going to find that this is all sports and outdoor related. Wow. And if you break your areas into zones, it just helps keep things so much more That's together. Cool. So one of the things that I think is really helpful is to get things off the ground. Mm. And this storage solution from Amazon helps do just that. This is storing lawn chairs, beach umbrellas, and it's just, it makes such a difference. And it's really easy, too. It's got Velcro straps that are adjustable. And is that the freestanding storage unit? No, that's right here. That? So for the freestanding, so this is a, a shelving system that allows you to also go vertical in your garage space. So here you'll notice the shelves are adjustable and I've got different categories labeled on each shelf mm. to really drill in and make things a lot easier for us to find. Yeah, I mean, we, we were both saying this is the best looking garage we've ever seen. Yeah. One of the things <laughs> that you do so well is that you use clear containers. Yes. I mean, it helps you see what's where, right? It makes it so much easier for you to find things quickly. But these are actually weather tight containers. They're from the container store and they're a necessary um, item in your garage. It's going to help with keeping all that water, all those bugs out mm. so that your stuff stays protected and nothing gets inside of it. So every garage needs these totes. You know, it's interesting too, because quite often if I don't have a clear container, I forget what's in it. Yeah. And then you, exactly. don't, you don't even use it. Exactly. And then you know, the kids can't exactly. fit it. Exactly in there. So you talk about yeah, getting yeah, things yeah. off the ground. Is this a solution yeah. to that? Yes, this is a utility track system. It's also from the container store. Um, but you'll see here, things like this stroller, if you try to lay it on or set it up on the ground, it's going to fall over. Right. So these have all types of hooks and accessory options. It's easy to use and allows things to stay where they need to. Mm -hmm. Now, walk us over to the helmets and the hats. This yeah. looks like a very, those, those, um, those containers, or what is that exactly? Some sort of tackle? Let me tell you, this is, this is from Wall Control, and this is like the way to add personality to your garage. This company has 12 different colors of pegboards, and you'll see here I created sort of a sports zone. Uh -huh. We've got a drop zone to make life easier to get out of the house. And then I've also put the kid helmets down here to make it easier mm -hmm. for you to get to them and, and to help get the kids involved. I know you guys have kids too, right? Yeah, yeah. and believe me, our garages it, do not look like this. Yeah, and my kids <laughs> play soccer. They can, we have though, more they... balls than I, I can't even tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have all the balls in the world, you need this mess oh, storage it. bag. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what's so you amazing. That ball it can bag. Velcro yeah. open right here so that you don't have to, let's say you want the blue ball at the mm. bottom. You Velcro open and grab what you want and then you can close it right back instead of having to dig through the entire ball bag. I know what to get Chanel for Christmas. Please. <laughs> All right, bikes. I feel, bikes take up the yes. most room. And, and so, oh, wow. Look at this. You Look hang at them. This. Hey, yeah, you hang them because, you know, new bikes, they don't always have kickstands either. So this here is from Store Your Board. It has adjustability. It can store up to five bikes. I love that there's a shelf above. So you can keep knee pads and extra bike parts and accessories. And, you know, your kids may not put their bike up every single time, but at least knowing that it has a permanent home is huge. That's so cool. And wait, really quickly, what about like little scooters? scooters. Oh, I was hoping you guys would ask about that. So look here. Oh, look These two-wheeled scooters. They have their own little parking garage, too. Now, normally, we would turn this over to the side there, but these guys will not stay up on their own. It's true. This scooter stand from Amazon, it's like 11 bucks. It is well worth the investment.
This is all the tool area. So okay. we're going to start here with this utility track. Now, this is from the container store. This entire track is in three pieces. $70, but it helps you get your broom off. Each one of these has a weight capacity of about 100, so we're looking at 300 wow. total. This wow. ladder is very heavy, and it's standing up there just fine. Oh my gosh, okay, so for your hardware, which again, oh, nobody yes. has ever seen something this organized in their entire life. <laughs> Talk to us yes. about this wall. I love this wall. This is for all things tools. I mean, one of the biggest things about organizing is if you don't see it, you are not going to use it. This system, yeah, it helps you. And remember, these are the same pegboards from Wall Control. We're using all the same color here, and we're showing a different use for it. And, and Wall Control has screwdriver accessories, tool magnetic strips, all these things that help you put your tools on display. So what about people who want some shelving in their garages? What do you think is the best yeah. um, use of that space? So again, on your shelves, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're creating zones and giving everything a specific purpose. So we've got this tool chest right mm -hmm. here, this pull-out drawer, this is from Lowe's, and it stores all your nuts, your bolts, your washers, and there's so many sizes for all of those parts. So this is gonna help keep it in shape so that you're not running around frantically looking for a piece mm -hmm. um, when you're going to assemble something. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can never find any of that. So, and then you keep all your old paint <laughs> on the top, it looks like up there. Yeah, I mean, to make it a little prettier, we color coded the cans just because we wanna give a little razzle dazzle. But yeah, we're storing things up. And, and the other thing you wanna keep in mind, this client has kids. So things like yeah, paint, chemicals, cleaners, we want to keep those a little bit higher up and out of reach so that the kids aren't getting their hands on them. Okay. And you also say the ceiling. Ceiling. That's what I want to see. Utilize the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. We've got, look at this guy here. So oh, wow. this is an overhead ceiling mounted rack. You have all of this ceiling space. You might as well use it. Now, I would say that you want to use this for things that are seasonal. So you don't want to be getting up and down yeah. on the ladder all day long, right? But holiday decorations go perfect up here because you take them down when you need them. And when the holiday is over, you put it back up. What a clever idea, putting all those seasonal items on the ceiling. To check out any of those products, head to day.com slash shop. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.